Two or three then for the back chasm. Citizen and Prince Salieri down the outside from Isle, but Sonic Express in front of the 200 metre mark, two in front. Dr. Grace is trying very hard. Citizen starting to come down the outside, but Sonic Express the leader. Dr. Grace, Citizen is starting to wear him down. Dr. Grace grabbed the front with 100 to go. Citizen putting in the giant strides, going after Dr. Grace. Dr. Grace hangs on. The doctor, Dr. Grace ahead to Citizen, third home away. Yes, Dr. Grace holding off Citizen to win by a short neck in a time of 128.6. Now let's check the doubles and quaddies. The extra double returned $10.60 for four and four. The daily double of two and five paid $25.65. The quadrilla combination of four, two, nine and five earned, earned you $558.35. And the quad extra dividend paid a very healthy $7,943.05 for the numbers two, ten, five and one. And Pete, it's been a big day in so Dr Grace is set to fulfil his connections prediction that he'll be one of Australia's best stayers. His strong list and stakes win in unsuitable conditions was impressive, as was the run of last year's winner, Citizen, who finished second. Earlier, My Memento got the money in the first on the card back from 9-2 to two into 13-4. to four. The second of My Wandering Star, a really good muddy, scoring at 3-1. to one. Shador tends to 14s but made it two in a row at Sandown, this time against better company. Now Ivory Way stamped his class on race four. 200 Ivory Way, two lengths in front of Lord Chicton. Down the outside is Delmar from Shot of Comfort and Purple Curse, but it's Ivory Way who's full of running. Three lengths in front, Delmar, Lord Chicton are finishing fairly, but Ivory Way's going powerfully, and Ivory Way will go on and win it by more than two lengths to Delmar. Lord Chicton third. Yes, very impressive. One of the imports from the strong David Hayes team, back from 11 to 2 to 9 to 2. The list of next, Citizen was backed into favourite. A slow pace early and a sprint home here. Third and fourth places, and then came Citizen, but Sonic Express at the 300 shook off Dr. Gracie, led by three lengths. Then a long break in the field to Citizen, Kessa Mile, and Prince Elieri. Sonic Express at the 200, the leader. Dr. Grace with courage is coming after him, and Citizen with a good late run. Dr. Grace took the lead. Here comes Citizen. Dr. Grace in front. Citizen coming at him, Dr. Grace, Citizen, Dr. Grace has wanted to hit the Citizen. Isle got up to grab third in front of... He wasn't really happy in the going and a great win and a top effort from last year's Caulfield Cup winner, Citizen. Manduk was tens to nine to four in the next, couldn't fill a place. The sun diving up from Lonely Dreamer and then Manduk down the outside, it's still Pug for me in front. Lonely Dreamer's a length and a half behind him and Manduk and Pug for me, he's too speedy for them. Pug for me goes on to win by about two lengths. Bobber for the miners between Streamer Sun and Lonely Dreamer, Justin. Too speedy and a real mudlark. Eased from nine to two, out to seven to one. A big finish from Diamond Zephyr in this. Followed by Blaine. Diamond Zephyr out wide, struggling on at the 200 metre mark now. And it's Proud Cell coming out after the leaders, but she hasn't gone on. And now Blame hits the front. Blame in front, special sculpture. Diamond Zephyr are coming through. Blame, but Diamond Zephyr on the outside's going home quickly. Blame and Diamond Zephyr, they're wide apart here. Maybe Diamond Zephyr from Blame, but they're very wide apart. Special sculpture in the middle's run third. Very good sprinting mare. Diamond Zephyr 9 to 4, out to 15 to 4, defeating Blame and Special Sculpture. And the last, this was a huge finish from Tiako Pearl. One for the bookies, 10 to 1, out to 33s. Daily double today paid for 2 and 5, 25, 65. The extra, $10.60 for 4 and 4. Uh, the quad rudder, 4, 2, 9, 4, 558, 35. Quad extra, 7,943.05, and nobody picked the last six winners, so a carryover pool to Caulfield on Saturday, more than $46,000. So plenty of form to be done. We'll try and crack that next week. Yeah, busy day too, Greg. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. Now to the... I think support is feeling a bit green tonight too. Last year's premiers will miss this year's finals. Geelong easily defeated Collingwood, running away with the game in the second half to relegate the Bank Pies to a position outside the six. Collingwood had no great incentive but to win to stay in the six, but it was Geelong who took the initiative. The magical Peter Dacos gave them a dream start. The Cats' small men at times were elusive, Sean Denham giving his side a slender lead. Not surprisingly, both sides showed plenty of determination. No injuries hampering Billy Brownless as he set the scene. Now a chance for Buse. Buse off the ground. But Shaw wouldn't let the Cats take all the credit. And the match wasn't without its casualties. 
probably do get down the out, so he's obviously cop one. Side. Billy Again. Brownless routinely went about winning the game for Geelong. While Geelong's running players were also in fine touch. Although it was a dismal four goal last quarter, the Cats kept purring as they ended Collingwood's rush to the finals. While Collingwood's inaccuracy was certainly a factor in the outcome, Geelong was clearly the more polished side, Brownless finishing with six goals. Collingwood's loss was Essendon's gain. The Bombers were thumped by Hawthorne and yet have still managed to snare a finals berth. A depleted Essendon side, minus Buick, Long and Hamilton, threw itself in knowing a place in the six was at stake. Oh, a little bit of feeling, Dennis, already. And there's a 50 metre penalty. The Bombers were kicking with the aid of a strong win, but Hawthorne was making far better use of the sodden turf. While the Hawks defenders were doing a fine job shutting down Essendon's advances, Hawthorne's forwards were toying with the Bombers. Open goal beckoning. Brereton gets it. Essendon looked really sloppy. Oh. What sort of a pass was that? Tony Hall was playing well, not afraid of putting himself in for the hard ball. The Hawks were thrashing the Bombers, and by half-time, Essendon's hold on a finals berth was precarious at best. That was great play. He plays on quickly, Dunstall. And the by himself, Hudson, who'll go into that open goal. By three-quarter time, Dunstall had five goals and Brereton four. Essendon looking a mere shadow of the side it was in the first half of the season. Dunstall came off injured. Essendon's best quarter was its last. Nevertheless, Hawthorne still inflicted an 80-point hiding. The Bombers only sneaking into the finals because Collingwood lost. Today's big winner was Melbourne, which climbed into the six at the Magpies' expense without getting near the football. But when you turn on and listen to the radio and believe you've got a chance, you know, it all starts to get very, very exciting. And uh, by the grace of other teams, of course, uh, you know, we're finished up in fifth spot. Well, while Essendon's performance was hardly inspiring going into the finals, strong indications today that Hawthorne will be very hard to beat. In possibly the upset of the season, the bottom side Fitzroy inflicted the worst defeat this year on the top team, West Coast. The turnaround came in the third quarter after the Eagles led convincingly at half time. Tony Lockett returned to the St Kilda lineup today and contributed 11 goals as the Saints kicked away from the Swans. And Kevin Bartlett's Tigers took Carlton apart today at the MCG, with veteran ruckman David Cloak the hero in his last game, kicking eight goals for the match. Despite its loss today, West Coast finishes clearly on top, while Hawthorne also has the double chance. Most importantly, Melbourne has jumped from 7th to 5th. Collingwood has tumbled to 8th, while Carlton has had its worst finish ever. Brisbane must beat Footscray at Carrara tonight if the Bears are to miss out on the wooden spoon. So, Melbourne plays Essendon next Saturday in the first elimination final. Geelong meets St Kilda the next day, the losers of those matches dropping out of the finals race. West Coast plays Hawthorne in Perth in the qualifying final. In the VFA elimination final, Springvale, who only just made the finals too strong for Port Melbourne, winning by 14 points. And in the first rugby league semi-final today, the Canberra Raiders thrashed Wests 22 to 8. Over the fight for the AFL Premiership has been narrowed down to six teams. The makeup of the six hinged on today's blockbuster between Geelong and Collingwood at Cadinia Park, where 30,000 fans saw the Magpies lose the right to defend their flag. The defeat was a bonanza for Melbourne, who jumped from seventh to fifth, while the Eagles finished on top despite a shock loss to 15th placed Fitzroy. So, in next week's first round of finals on Saturday at VFL Park, Melbourne tackle Essendon on Sunday, Geelong and and St Kilda take centre stage at the park in the other do or die battle and the Eagles and Hawthorne meet in the qualifying final at Subiaco. Harvey Silver was at Cadinia Park for the match that settled the six. They came early and they came in droves. With them they brought chairs, blankets, thermoses and patients and they needed the latter more than anything. By the time gates opened at 10.30, the queue snaked for 200 metres outside Cardinia Park. Finals football had arrived a week early. There were dignitaries well known at Sleepy Hollow and other familiar faces. There were also faces that were totally unrecognisable. It all combined to make it Geelong's biggest day. We, uh, we expect uh, 32,000, which is a full house here. Uh, how many more turn up and can't get in, I'm not too sure, but there'd obviously be some people who won't get in. In fact, the gates were never closed. 
but in the sardine can atmosphere, any view was a good view. Even those who arrived before dawn and grabbed seats on the fence found cause for complaint. We certainly did because all Collingwood people managed to get in. They were jumping the fence, they got through gates and we don't know how they got in. And we had to have a big fight to get our seats. I was here at six o'clock but I wasn't at first by any stretch of imagination. And all the other stupid mum pushed in I just got off the train and just pushed in and everything. <coughs> all that was forgotten when the teams made their way onto the ground. The crowd remembered what all the waiting was for. But the Magpie faithful weren't rewarded. Collingwood out of the finals. All the highlights a little later in sport. Harvey Silver, National 9 News. A daring today's football. Thank you, Joe. Good evening. As you saw earlier, Geelong bundle Collingwood out of the finals race with a 41-point win at Cadinia Park. The Cats assumed control with a six-goal burst in the second quarter and from then on the Magpies struggled to stay in touch. For Geelong, Brownless booted six. Collingwood had no greater incentives but to win to stay in the six and the magical Peter Dacos gave them a dream start. Dacos got a handle. Oh, he controlled it beautifully and he's done it again. Not surprisingly, both sides showed plenty of determination. The Cats' small men at times were elusive, Denon giving his side a slender lead. But by quarter time, the Magpies had steadied with the wind and held a nine-point break. Brownless' first set the scene for the second term. The big man was causing Ron McEwen plenty of worries. The Magpies missed easy chances, Lehman kicking their only major, while two late goals to Brownless, the second threw a questionable free kick, gave the home side a handy 19-point half-time lead. Geelong built on that in the third, their running players cutting the Magpies' back line to ribbons. Brownless and Malakalis leading the charge. Down by 27 points at the last change, the reigning Premiers went back to the drawing board. It didn't inspire anything. In fact, they lost Dacos with a possible ankle injury. Only four goals were scored in a lacklustre quarter. Geelong's last was a beauty to finish Collingwood's rush to the finals. Despite a mammoth loss to Hawthorne at VFL Park, Essendon are still in the race for the flag. With Brereton and Dunstall booting nine between them, the Hawks were at their awesome best, while the Bombers looked tired and well out of form. More from Tony Jones. Realising the importance of the game, veteran Terry Danaher addressed the Bombers before the first bounce, but in a spirited opening, Hawthorne struck first when Lawrence found Dunstall in the pocket. Aided by the breeze, Essendon answered straight away with Werner showing the better judgement in the square. But another goal to Dunstall, followed by Pritchard a minute later, helped the Hawks to a 17-point lead at quarter time. The ill-feeling between the players continued, with both sides desperate in defence, and it wasn't until the 12-minute mark when Deer booted the first for the turn. From that moment on, Hawthorne took over to lead at the main change by 47 points. The second half was a misery for the Bombers. Down by 69 points, they couldn't afford to be humiliated, and Watson endeavoured to lift his team. But it was Hawthorne's day, running out winners by 80 points. Tony Jones, National 9 News. Swans coach Cole Kinnear was given a farewell to forget at Moorabbin as St Kilda used the battling Sydney team as practice for the finals. Lockett booted 11 and with his teammates dominating just about every other position, the Saints ran out winners by 39 points. Now to the upset of the day, if not the year. Fitzroy's win over flag favourites West Coast at Princess Park. For a side that, that had only kicked one goal up until half time, it was an amazing result and one that stunned Mick Malthouse. Graham Dawson reports. The Eagles did much of the early attacking, with Peter Sumich kicking two goals in the first quarter, his second from a superb banana kick. Fitzroy's only goal for the first half came late in the second term, but after the interval, it was a different story, with the bottom placed Lions looking more like the Premiership favourites, and the game had come alive. The home side was able to match the Eagles in the final term, and at last the Lions had given their loyal fans some joy after a disappointing season. And at the MCG, the Tigers came from 23 points down at quarter time to eventually overrun the Blues by 15 points. Veteran David Cloak in his 333rd and final match booted eight goals, including three in the second quarter. Carlton skipper Stephen Kernahan's sharp shooting gave the Blues an eight-point lead at three-quarter time, but the Tigers finished too strongly and ended the season with a well-deserved win. Graham Dawson, National 9 News.
So the finalists next weekend will be the Eagles and Hawthorne, Geelong and St Kilda and Melbourne and Essendon. North Melbourne and Collingwood will finish just outside the six. The Brisbane Bears can avoid the wooden spoon with a win over Footscray tonight. It's now official Tony Lockett is the winner of the John Coleman medal and he can even add to that tally. In the VFA elimination final, Springvale managed to keep up to Port Melbourne or Port Melbourne went down in fact by 14 points. Still to come tonight, US Open highlight. Michael Roberts and Michael, I guess last year's grand final video will be big with Collingwood supporters this September. Yes, Pete, the Pies won't get the chance to defend their title after being outclassed by Geelong at Cadinia Park. In beating the reigning Premier by 41 points, the Cats made sure Collingwood would miss the September action. Instead, Melbourne will play in an elimination final next week. Andy Kay reports. The Magpies were playing for their very existence today, but it was the Cats who bit first, a goal against the Breeze to Hocking. It wouldn't be a real Collingwood side without some classic Dacos magic. Today, he only made us wait five minutes. But the Woods didn't use the breeze as well as they should have. Geelong was within nine points at the first change and Cardinia Park was no place for the faint-hearted. The second term was all the Cats. He's caught. What a tackle by Neville Brown. Billy Brownless booted four goals for the quarter. Another from Andrew Buse would have made Maradona proud. Trailing by 19 points at the long break, Collingwood season was slipping. Tony Shaw showed teammates what was required. Anyone who thought the game couldn't get any tougher was wrong. Ask Mark Bairstow or Damien Monkhurst. Geelong's defence was doing a super job on Dacos. Collingwood's couldn't do the same on Brownless. And when Malakellis chipped in for two goals late in the quarter, the Magpies were almost gone. The Cats open the final term with this. Good looking kick. Sensational kick. And ended it 30 minutes later the same way. Andrew Kay, Seven Nightly News. At Veerfell Park, Hawthorne sounded out a warning to the Eagles with an impressive win against Essendon. The Hawks were awesome as they destroyed the Bombers by 80 points, but they have a worry with an injury to Jason Dunstall who booted five goals this afternoon. Realising the importance of the game, veteran Terry Danaher addressed the Bombers before the first bounce. But in a spirited opening, Hawthorne struck first when Lawrence found Dunstall in the pocket. All Hawthorne so far. Dunstall stabs Goldwood. Good looking kick. Aided by the breeze, Essendon answered straight away, with Werner showing the better judgment in the square. And he's kicked it. But another major to Dunstall, followed by Pritchard on the burst a minute later, helped put the Hawks up by 17 points at quarter time. The feeling between players continued, with both sides desperate in defence, and it wasn't until the 12-minute mark when Deere booted the first for the term. From that moment on, Hawthorne simply took over, in the air and on the ground, to lead at the main change by 47 points. The Dons needed goals, and Kieran Spawn responded, but Dunstall continued to be effective. The Hawks' defence was outstanding, and every time they attacked, looked dangerous to stretch their lead. Down by 69 points, Essendon couldn't afford to be humiliated and Watson endeavoured to lift his team. But it was certainly Hawthorne's day, despite losing Dunstall, and they ended up winners by 80 points. In the upset of the round, perhaps the season, Fitzroy stunned top of the ladder Eagles at Princess Park. The Lions chalked up only their fourth win of the year to celebrate the last game of Ruckman Matt Rendell. Grant Retallick reports. The Eagles did much of the early attacking. Sumich on the lead, marks low down. Sumich kicked two goals in the first term, his second a booming banana kick. Not bad. Gee whiz, I think he's kicked it. <laughs> Fitzroy had their chances but failed to kick a single goal. The second quarter and the Eagles looked like blowing the Roys away. This was Fitzroy's only goal for the first half. But talk about comebacks. In the third quarter, it was the bottom place side looking like the Premiership favourites. Rendell now to Harding, and Harding's kick is a beauty. Suddenly, the game had come alive. Front goal umpire likes it. Crowd likes it. We have a tied game. Fitzroy held a two-goal lead going into the final quarter. The side's confidence running high as they kicked further ahead. When the final siren sounded, Fitzroy had given their loyal fans some joy after a disappointing season. Well, that would have to be the upset of the season, last beating first. 
Down at Moravan, St Kilda enjoyed a comfortable win against Sydney. With Tony Lockett back in the side after missing last week's round with the flu, the Saints ran out winners by 39 points. Lockett bagged 11. Kim Sporton reports. Despite the muddy conditions at Moorabbin, the standard of play was very high. Early on, Sydney took the game up to St Kilda, grabbing the early lead. However, as the quarter wore on, the Saints warmed up. With Lockett, Lowe and Winmar all playing well, the Saints forced their way to a 10-point lead at the first change. St Kilda extended its lead in the second quarter after a brilliant snap from Harvey. And at the main break, it was the Saints by 23 points, with Tony Lockett having four goals to his credit. In the third quarter, Lockett continued to dominate. He booted his fifth and sixth goals as the Saints kicked away. However, Sydney refused to lay down. Love was proving dangerous up forward, kicking his third. The final term, though, was all St Kilda. Or, to be more precise, all Tony Lockett. The big man booted five goals in the final term for a match tally of 11. Kim Sporton, Seven Nightly News. And Richmond Ruckman David Cloak in his final league match inspired the Tigers to a memorable victory over Carlton at the MCG. Cloak, who is 36 and today played his 333rd game, was chaired off the ground after booting eight goals in the Tigers' 15-point win. And this is how the ladder looks after 24 rounds. The Eagles finished three games clear on top, while Melbourne jumped up to fifth. The Bears must beat Footscray on the Gold Coast tonight to avoid the wooden spoon. And next Saturday, Essendon and Melbourne will do battle in the first elimination final at Waverley. On Sunday, Geelong takes on St Kilda in the second knockout match. The Eagles will play Hawthorne on Sunday. And in the VFA elimination final, Springvale beat Port Melbourne by 14 points. I'll be back after the break with more sport, and Simon Doyle just makes it into the final of the 1500 metres in Tokyo. It's a Muppet invasion. We are going to paradise. Making an impression wherever they go. The Muppets at Walt Disney World premieres Sunday on 7. But their premiums are already too low. This is incredible. Who are these people? It's GAO Australia, sir. I know that. But now they're giving discounts just because your home and contents are on the one insurance policy. I thought it was rather a good idea. What? Plus a new for old option on both home and contents? And discounts if you're over 55 and retired. What are we going to do about it? Well, you could retire, sir. <laughs> Phone GIO Australia for a better deal on your home and contents insurance. George, why is the bank changing its sign? Well, the symbol is a visual reflection of change at the bank. Oh! But why is the bank changing its sign? Beware of first appearances. Only one large automatic washer is heavy duty, yet the most advanced in the world. The Simpson Aquarius. Simpson, making life easier. <laughs> you must really love garlic bread. Oh, sure, don't you? Yeah, but none of my bread. Oh, don't worry about that. After you eat, have some PK. PK has that clean, fresh taste and a freshness burst that refreshes your breath. PK has a freshness burst that refreshes your breath. PK. Home and away job keeps getting better. Lou, I want you to be my wife. The decision of a lifetime and a twist of the knife. Hope you can make